Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to take a look at running a hypothesis test for a population mean with unknown population standard deviation using our p value method. So, before we run this test, let's review really quick our p value method and how that works, what it tells us. So, the p value method works similarly to the rejection region method, but with a little less hand calculation. So let's say that we are running a one-sided test. Uh, and this time, let's just talk about maybe an upper-sided test. So in the end of our hypothesis test, we're going to get a p-value or a probability. And that p-value is the probability of getting a sample like the one that you got given that the null hypothesis is true. So that means that if we have a p-value that is larger than our significance level, so if the probability of getting a sample like the one we have is fairly large compared to our alpha, then that means the probability of having a sample like this is pretty normal. It's, it's a large, so we are going to fail to reject in that case. But if we get a very small p-value, a p-value that is less than our alpha, then that means the probability of getting a sample like we did with a true null hypothesis is very small, meaning that that null hypothesis is unlikely to be true, so we are going to reject it. So let's run this particular hypothesis test and see which scenario we end up in. So a pain reliever currently being used in a hospital is known to bring relief to patients in a mean time of 3.5 minutes. To compare a new pain reliever with the one currently being used, the new drug is administered to a random sample of 50 patients. The mean time to relief for the sample is 2.8 minutes with a standard deviation of 1.14 minutes. Test the claim that the new pain reliever is more effective in reducing the mean time until a patient receives relief from pain. Use a significance level of 0.01. So let's start by writing a pair of hypothesis statements. So we'll start with our statement of equality. Mu equals, we're always going to set that to our status quo or what's usual, so that would be 3.5. And if we're testing the claim that our new medicine is more effective in reducing the mean time, then we would say mu to be less than 3.5. So using the p-value method, we don't really need to do any calculation by hand. All we need to do is go to our stat menu in our calculator. Since we have a sample standard deviation, we're going to be using that t-test or our student t-distribution. And we need to make sure that we toggle over to stats. And then we're going to enter one, two, three, four pieces of information. So our mu sub zero is our mu in our null hypothesis, in this case 3.5. x bar is the mean for our sample, in this case 2.8. S of x is the standard deviation of our sample, in this case 1.14, and n is the number in our sample, in this case 50. Last but not least, we need to enter in what kind of test we are running. For that, we just look at the way that we wrote our alternative hypothesis. So if we have mu is less than 3.5, then I'm going to go ahead and grab the less than one and toggle down to calculate. When I hit calculate, I am brought up my test statistic actually, so you could even use this to check your test statistic if you were using the rejection region method, and a p-value. That p-value is what we're looking for here. In this case, our p-value is very, very small because it is 3.53 with e to the negative 5. Remember that e to the negative 5 means 0 point, and then we'll have four zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 3, 5, 3, and so on. 
So we want to compare that to our significance or alpha level of 0 0.01. Well, certainly this p-value is much smaller than 0 0.01. So with a p-value that is low, we will reject our null hypothesis. So we can say there is enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis that the mean time to relief is 3.5 minutes. Meaning it does look like this new medication is more effective than the old one. All right, guys, that does it for this video series on hypothesis testing for means with an unknown population standard deviation. Until next time, we'll see you in a future video.